Main Battle Tank or MBT. A type of powerful, heavily armored military vehicle designed for frontline combat which combines operational mobility and tactical offensive and defensive capabilities. Germany has the Leopard 2 main battle tank, while the United Kingdom has the Challenger 2. The two tanks reflect the difference in the preferred tactics of the Germans and British. Even though both have 120mm main guns. Challenger 2 the primary MBT of the United Kingdom, developed and manufactured by Bay Systems Land and Armaments. It entered service in 1998. Leopard 2, a main battle tank developed by Krauss Maffe in the 1970s for the West German Army. The tank first entered service in 1979 and has since been adopted by numerous other armies. The Leopard 2 is a German-made tank and Berlin holds the export license. Rheinmetall built more than 3,000 Leopard 2s, and many hundreds of them are in storage across Europe. When it comes to modern main battle tanks, the British Challenger 2 and the German Leopard 2 are two of the most formidable platforms in existence. Both tanks have earned their reputation through decades of development and operational experience. The question of whether the Challenger 2 is superior to the Leopard 2, however, is not one that can be answered simply. The Leopard 2 and Challenger 2 are not new tanks. The Leopard 2 entered service with the German Army in 1979. The Challenger 2 debuted in UK service in 1998. But both tanks still are among the best in the world. During World War II, the British and Germans had some epic tank battles perhaps the most notable at the African Battle of El Alamein. Germany had some of the finest tanks. But British designs weren't slouches and some were modifications of American designs that added firepower like the Sherman Firefly. The Challenger 2 emerged as a heavily redesigned successor to the Challenger 1 tank, which in its only combat the 1991 Gulf War vs Iraq performed well, destroying around 300 tanks, and executed the longest range tank kill in history by destroying AT-55 from 3.17 miles away. And none of the 221 Challenger 1s deployed were lost to enemy fire. Thanks to its then advanced Chobham composite armor, also famously girding the American Abrams tank. The Challenger 2 has seen combat in Iraq, when 120 were deployed in the invasion and occupation of Iraq between 2003 and 2007. In one incident, a Challenger 2 ambushed in Basra survived hits from allegedly dozens of rocket-propelled grenades without being knocked out. Later on, in two incidents, Challenger 2 crew members were injured by an RPG and a mine blast that struck the belly armor, but virtually no tanks are immune to damage from this quarter. The Challenger 2 has seen combat in Iraq, where it performed well and demonstrated high levels of crew survivability. The Leopard 2 has been deployed in various international conflicts, including in Afghanistan, where it faced asymmetric threats and also proved its resilience. The Challenger 2 is equipped with the L30A1 120mm rifled gun, which is unique among NATO main battle tank armaments. Its rifled design allows it to fire high explosive squash head rounds, which are particularly effective against non-armored targets and fortifications. The Leopard 2, on the other hand, sports the smoothbore Rheinmetall 120mm gun, capable of firing a variety of NATO standard rounds with high precision. The German gun is a 120mm smoothbore cannon, early versions of the Leopard 2 had the same gun used on the M1A1 and M1A2 Abrams main battle tank. The Brits, though, installed a gun 25% longer on the Leopard 2A6. The British have gone with a rifled 120mm gun known as the L30 for the Challenger 2. This is a marked improvement over the L11A5 used on the Challenger 1, which set the record for the longest kill shot against another tank. While the Leopard 2's smoothbore gun is widely regarded for its accuracy and range, the Challenger 2's rifled gun has a legacy of reliability and versatility. The choice between these armaments often comes down to the specific tactical preferences and requirements of an army. The Challenger 2 boasts Chobham armor, an advanced composite armor that provides substantial protection against anti-tank weaponry. The Challenger 2 first saw combat during the 2003 invasion of Iraq where they pretty much just steamrolled everything in their path this is sort of to be expected when you put in Cold War era technology. With relatively unskilled crews against some of the foremost tanks and tank operators in the world. In simplified terms, Challenger 2s did really really well. 
No Challenger 2 has been lost in combat since it was first deployed in 1994, although one was destroyed in a friendly fire incident in Iraq in 2003. The record is partly because of the relatively small numbers built and their infrequent deployment. Notable incidents involving the Challenger 2 during the 2003 Iraq War included a Challenger 2 that was immobilized and took 14 RPG hits along with a hit from an anti-tank missile. The crew weren't even injured and the tank was repaired and back into operation six hours later. Even more impressive was an incident where a Challenger 2 got hit by 70 RPG shots and survived. The Challenger is not obsolete, although may be slightly less capable than other modern tanks. It's more than well armored enough to stand up to modern anti-tank threats although not the best despite popular belief. Its firepower although slightly old is more than good enough to face modern opponents and its sizem could do with modernization but good enough for what they are. It's fallen behind in recent years but it's certainly nothing you want to face on the battlefield that's for sure. It's not even close to being obsolete. Just slightly neglected by the MOD. The life extension program is the next big upgrade for Challenger 2. Its main purpose is to modernize the dated systems and firepower and give all new digital architecture. It's going to be equipped for the best and latest technologies. A brilliant. Battles tested L55120 mm smoothbore gun. According to some sources upgraded composite armor with possibly a new form of AMAP advanced modular nano ceramic armor. Brand new FCS, laser warning, hard kill defenses APS and independent thermal systems FO-54, the commander with a new next generation of infrared imaging. The turret is to be the first fully digital turret. The digital turret comes with a few nice designs and features that increase its survivability as well as its combat prowess. There are also plans on upgrading the engine to a new 1,800 horsepower power pack. Even though only half of the Challenger 2 will be upgraded, this will easily be one of the most formidable MBT in the world. Challenger 2 has a lot of life left in it. In conclusion, the Challenger 2 by no means is obsolete. The Challenger 2 is easily one of the most formidable tanks you can come across on the modern battlefield. The Challenger 2 is still in very well armored and capable tank.